Hi, welcome to this mega expose of the sabotage being done to Indian domestic elephants. I have broken down this video into 10 smaller parts for better understanding. <clears throat> it's very important to know the history, so we get started with history. When did we really started rearing elephants in India at home? We are talking about 4000 years ago. The evidences, Sangam literature 1. Second, even the recent Kiladi excavations, archaeological excavations which are taking place have confirmed that people in Tamil Nadu had elephants at home for working in the fields, one. They were used for timber logging, they were used in construction. Apart from all these, the king Rajaraja Chola, the great Chola emperor, had 60,000 elephants in his armory. And he conquered right from uh, Nepal to Thailand to Indonesia, the whole of Southeast Asia. And evidence for this is the uh, Mahouts, whom we also call as Pagans, using Tamil, ancient Tamil words. So that's a bit of history. Next we will look at the wild. What is happening to the wild right now? Though the forest department claims there are 27,000 wild elephants in India, we can challenge not more than 20,000 exist because all their counting, just like the tiger population, even the elephant population counting is not scientific. They go into the forest, they count oh, the long uh, tusk, or the short tail, these are the kind of you know markings they take and start counting. So it's not a scientific way of uh, counting elephants. So that number of 27,000 can be challenged. So we're talking at something like 20,000 elephants. So what is happening to the wild? There is no nutritious wild left in India anymore. It's all has been encroached and been destroyed by human habitations. One. Second, elephants have started dying because of various uh, reasons. You can start with electrocution, poisoning, uh, uh, using uh, boar traps like the one happened in Kerala uh, and uh, poaching, uh, electrocution, all these amounts to killing elephants by farmers and uh, people who have vested interest in the forest land. Then talk about falling from heights, then getting hit by railway uh, train and falling from heights. These are various reasons they were dying till yesterday. But today they are also dying because of eating plastics and liquor, broken liquor bottles hurting them. So these are various ways which wild elephants are dying today. Apart from all this, we also have the human animal conflict, uh, which also kills close to the equal number of uh, human beings are also killed, which means Till a few years ago, we, we spoke about some 300 elephants dying in the wild in a year. That's from, uh, from, the, from the northest uh, corner to the southern part of uh, India. Only 300 elephants died. But last year, we can amount, count something like 1,500 elephant deaths. An equal number of human beings also have died because of wild elephants and human uh, conflict. And uh, this is not uh, being a priority for the earlier government or the current government to solve. So that's very unfortunate. So the bottom line is uh, wild elephants could get wiped out from Indian wild in another 10 years time. Next we look at the foreign NGOs who are working very actively in destroying domestic animals or animals which are working. Uh, PETA is the first name which comes to your mind because we experienced them in uh, Jalikattu, uh, Mumbai kerosene bola cards. Now they are trying to destroy Jaipur elephant rights. Uh, then you also have uh, Human Society of the United States, HSI in India. They are known as uh, Human Society International in India. Uh, these organizations are more of marketing organization. They pick up an issue like Jalikattu, they propagate about it, build up momentum and they push towards a ban of the sport or the event uh, so that they can earn millions of dollars in donations. They are amply supported by a cult known as veganism, which is also promoted by these two organizations worldwide. And they have their Indian agents with about whom we will talk later. And these organizations are, uh, the veganism is a concept uh, which is, uh, which had caught on with the people with weaker mind. They can be easily identified on Facebook. Uh, 
uh, by the way in which they share pores of slaughterhouses and uh, cruel uh, slaughtering of uh, various animals etc and uh, their objective is to uh, disturb your mind and get you hooked on to that clan. Uh, this, this, this clan does not understand culture, Dan does not understand customs, this clan does not understand animals, that's the best thing. So without any understanding of your culture, your animals, your, your animal, the working animals, they would uh, try to go after them and uh, ban them. So that's where they are and uh, next part we are going to talk about the Jallikattu Sabotage. The Jallikattu Sabotage is a very interesting subject for you to understand how this entire network of Mafia works. We have PETA and America HSUS funding them. So they go around and a huge amount of money comes into India, uh, especially PETA has brought in something close to 40, 50 crores in last five years. What do they do with this money? Because they have some three employees in India, three or four employees. And what do they do with this money? They use this money for lobbying. They use this money for corrupting people. They use this money for buying judgments. Uh, when I say buying judgments, they get rogue reports and rogue evidences produced in the court with the help of statutory authorities. So very important piece of role uh, or the support is for PETA in India is being played by AWBI. The Animal Welfare Board of India, right from the days of Mr. Karb and Mr. Chinnikrishna, who were literal puppets for PETA, who helped them ban Chalikattu. And they have a set of organization. So we have an organization by name FIAPO, Federation of Indian Animal Protection Organization, which also forms as an umbrella for all the animal rights organizations in India. What do they do? Their main job is to propagate. They receive something close to 3 crores every year as donations from the foreign NGOs. And their job is to go about catching uh, young, young students. You know, we are talking about kids who don't even understand what veganism is, what animal cruelty is. They will go and show those cruel slaughterhouse videos to kids in uh, first standard, second standard, kindergarten and etc wash their minds, you know, and uh, ask them to give up meat, etc. The kids normally are known for being very finicky and very selective eaters. And when you go and show them all this video, they really get disturbed and they stop consuming them, even though they come from a non-vegetarian house or whatever. Now, post that happen, even, even a vegetarian house, the kids start giving up milk and paneer and uh, dahi and all that. So, what happens post that? The kids immune system breaks down and the kids start becoming weak. This happened in Coimbatore when a set of parents figured out their kids are becoming weak day by day. Now when they went after investigating what had actually happened, few idiots whom they call vegans in uh, this part of the uh, country went around propagating these kids not to consume uh, non-vegetarian or any animal product. So this is the kind of nonsense which they keep doing. So this is FIAPO's job is to promote this culture. Second, you also have PFA, you have Blue Cross of India, you have WVS, you have IPAN, you have WRRC, you have CUPA. These are the same set of people who part of this umbrella go out spreading false information. They will play videos of elephant getting tortured, which would have happened in somewhere in Thailand or Sri Lanka. And they tell you why riding elephant is cruel. They will speak about the kraal. The kraal is a place where the elephant gets tamed and trained. That kraal is not at all cruel because there are Madras High Court judgments which proving that kraal is not cruel. But they will use this document to demean India, demean the Mahautri, etc. and to score points. One thing we need to understand, horse racing is allowed across the world by all the courts. The reason is the courts feel to race an horse at that high speed, it needs a special skill and, and it's an art. Similarly, Mahautri, which has been followed for 4000 years, to tame an elephant, to get work done of an elephant is also an art and skill which should be revered, at least in India, Thailand and Indonesia. Whereas these organizations like PETA, Human Society America have no understanding of these animals, no understanding of this culture are here to destroy them because their importancy 
in unable to protect the wild, they want to make the domestic animals extinct. So another reason is there is money in making domestic animals extinct. They will take up a case like Jalika to propagate it for some three, four years, then will impose a ban. By the time they would have convinced the whole wide world that the Indians are barbaric and they are torturing these bulls and the good deed has been done and this ban has come and all these animals are going to live in joy and happiness which is untrue because most of these bulls once it is delicate was banned they all went to slaughter. Peta didn't care about that because Peta's ambition was getting those millions of dollars coming in from abroad. You need to watch on the 4th of June Republic TV 9 p.m. debate 2020. We had exposed PETA in that show. Now next move on to the next part. Next is the actual sabotage. PIL was filed at Supreme Court by an organization named WRRC. WP Civil 743 of 2014. WRC stands for Wildlife Rescue Rehabilitation Center, which is a sister concern of Cupa Bangalore. They are also the stealers of Kanchi Mat elephants, the three elephants whom they stole, kept them in a place called Marakanam near Pondicherry, and begged the Westerners, saying that we have removed the chains from the elephants. They are chain free and having the most ecstatic lifetime in their whole life. And what they actually did is they underfed the elephants made them weak and removed the chains for donations, mind you. This was exposed in our writ petition, civil 6030 of 2019 at Madras High Court and these elephants were taken out. Now, the same people have filed this appeal in Supreme Court and they have PETA who went and who tried to sabotage the Jaipur elephant rights, failed and they too went and joined this PIL. Then we have this foreigner by name Sangeeta Crypto Iyer, who had made this rogue documentary called Gods and Shackles to demean India, demean Indians as barbaric and cruel to the elephants, and she has also joined them. So then you also have Maneka Gandhi's team, Gauri Malaki, joining that PIL. They want ban all domestic elephants in India, which is around 3,000 of them. So what you need to understand, to maintain an elephant, it will cost 1 lakh per month. So if you're going to maintain 3,000 elephants, that will be close to some 30 crore of expenses every month for the exchequer uh, and the forest department. So this, these are the facts and figures you need to know. So how are they going about doing it? They have the rest of the organizations like FIAPO, Blue Cross, PFA, uh, HSI in India, all of them doing the false propaganda as I told you earlier that elephants are being treated very cruel in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, etc. And this has become a small time business for them because when they ban the circus animals, they let all the wild uh, like the tigers and lions go to the zoos. They put them in Tripathi Zoo. All of them died in a year's time because they were hand fed. They did not do that with the elephant because elephant is a bigger attraction and elephants can be controlled with the mahal. So they took all these elephants like the Marakan and WRRC. They keep them in their shelters. Shame India abroad for donations. This is what they do. Exactly what is uh, Wildlife Assessor Mathura doing, who is a bigger crook than anybody else because he has got almost 30 elephants. Now, all these things happen with the blessings of one lady who has got them multiple FCRA numbers for donations and she has also helped them to get Nari Shakti Puraskar Award. Not just making money, swindling money is corruption. Misusing your power to give awards to people of your clan is also corruption is what you need to understand. So, apart from this organization, they also developed agents who came from abroad, made documentaries in India. Bridget Uthar Kornetsky made a documentary called Where Elephant Sleeps about Jaipur Elephants, propagated it worldwide. She won multiple awards. She made tons of money in donations. And that money get, got rooted into India. And she is an agent who was here to shame India. One. Then they had Sangeeta Crypto Ayer, who made gods and shackles. She filmed, filmed five elephants out of 500 in Kerala, which obviously these five were actually cruelly treated, and told the whole world that Indians are barbaric. All the temples 
elephants should be removed and they should be put in a shelter. Recently, a minister, a forest minister, ex forest minister of Kerala came on video and he said there was this lady who came from Canada. She wanted the forest department to give a hundred acres. She wanted the forest department to confiscate all the temple elephants, give it to her and also give her 10 to 15 crores and she will upkeep them. So this man asked her like, if I'm going to do everything, why am I giving it to you? I'm the forest department, I myself do it. And this is Sangeeta Crypto Aya. She has gone to the extent of collecting funds stating that she is building elephant corridors in Indian wild and she is going to buy two acres and recently she collected $50,000. Now this is the kind of con which is happening across the world, shaming India, telling that Indians are barbaric, Indians are cruel. The actual people who reared elephant for 4,000 years have become suddenly cruel and barbaric. They don't know how to upkeep their elephants and they are collecting donations. The best thing about Kerala, the Tuskers. There are something like 82 majestic Tuskers. There are 400 totally of male and female, but 82 majestic Tuskers who are more than 10 to 11 feet tall. And each of them is so majestic because they up kept something like a Rolls Royce Phantom. Because they, most of these elephants earn anywhere between 5 to 30 lakhs in a month in parading in temples. This is the irking point for these foreign NGOs that if you remove the footfall of these temples, okay, you win, your conversions will increase. So what they do, they tried all their gimmicks. They first tried to take this elephant and keep them in their, their religious places. I'm talking to both Abrahamic religions. Footfall did not improve for them, but Trishur Puram kept getting lakhs and lakhs of people every year. So what if they remove all the 20 elephants from Trishur Puram? I can bet not even a lakh of people will turn up. Just exactly like the desecration of Sabarimala, exactly like the, 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 the sabotage against Jalikattu, this is another one which is happening, which is well planned, well networked and well funded. There are huge FCRM money coming into India with the blessings of some ex-ministers who are still active and manipulating you know, the system. Next short and sweet, we're going to see who are the people who are funding them. We have the whole lot of uh, bear associations from abroad thinking the Indians are saving bears and elephants and dogs. They are funding them. PETA is one of the primary funders. Um, uh, Human Society US is a primary funder. Royal SPCA from UK. A mission rabies from UK, WES from UK, uh, Dog Trust from UK. These are huge funders. And some places you also find Wildlife SOS US and UK funding the Wildlife SOS India. Similarly, WES. Similarly, uh, PETA. First of all, these are FCRA is given for donations from abroad. It's not for fund transfer from one organization to their sister organization in India. These are some of the sabotages which you should be very well aware of. Next is FCRA numbers. Most of these organizations which are working <coughs> for sabotaging elephants and desi animals have multiple FCRA numbers. Now you take about Wildlife SOS and the Sister Concern Friendly Discourse, two numbers. You talk about Blue Cross of India Chennai and uh, CPR Foundation, CPR Education. Three numbers, that's uh, Chinni Krishna, the ex-vice chairman AWBI, who is also chairman emeritus FIAPO, under which you have IPAN, WES, all of them coming in. Then he is also president of Mission Rabies India, who funds him and other organizations in India. So he is there everywhere. He is the kingpin. He is there in all this network. He plays a very vital role, including demon Hinduism, including bringing in JNU, ex-JNU representatives to talk bad about Draupadi in Mahabharata. This man is behind all this. This man has been exposed uh, to even to the uh, RSS. Okay. Now, apart from that, all these FCRA, then we talk about WRRC, QPA, they have two numbers. I, IPAN and WBS, they have two numbers. Uh, who else? Uh, QPA, WRRC, uh, PFA, Wildlife SOS has got two numbers. Uh, WRRC and QPA got two numbers. Like that, most of them have multiple FCRA numbers. The key point here is to get an FCRA number, 
it's so damn difficult you'll have to bribe close to 50,000 rupees with that 50,000 rupees you probably save 50 dogs or five cattle in surgeries so that's what we normally think and hesitate but all these organizations have multiple FCR numbers got through the minister ex-minister sitting in Delhi and the ladies in those organizations whether you talk about Suparna Ganguly, Gauri Maleki, Nandita Shah, Nandita Krishna, uh, Amala Akineni, uh, uh, Norma Alvarez, uh, Anjali, uh, Anjali Sharma, who else? A few more. All of them have Nari Shakti Purashkar Awards. Period. Next two things club together private elephants and temple elephants in Tamil Nadu. There are something like 70 to 80 of them and the problem here is the same minister sitting in Delhi uh, manipulating Central Zoo Authority, Project Elephant, uh, MOEF, AWBI have ensured that elephants do not go out of their shed more than two times in a month. So which I am talking about they need to go and participate in functions if it's a private elephant and they have to earn money for their upkeep and their owner's food. right? So an elephant has to make at least 1 lakh of rupees every month. So they need to be paraded at least 10 times. We talk about 10,000 rupees is what they get for each of those parading. So when they make 1 lakh, the mahout will, so the, the owner will spend 70,000 on them for their food and upkeep of their mahouts, their cavities, their helpers, salaries, then 30,000 for him. So if that's not going to happen, the elephant will be ill-treated. So this is what this, this clan does not understand. They want the owner to abuse the elephant by underfeeding them and starving them. But the forest department and the owners are hand in glove. So they bribe the forest department, take out these elephants on parading and they even overdo whatever they are supposed to do and uh, excessive use of these elephants without any rest leads to their death also. So any cruelty goes unnoticed because the forest department's already on the take. Next is they don't let them, the forest department will not let you to take your elephant for mating because even that they want to stop because any offspring you know, that will again will have to be in private custody. Even that has been blocked by this lady. You cannot buy any more new elephants for any temples across India. That is also banned. That means no private elephants can be transferred from one person to another or bought by a temple or another private entity. So all these are banned and destroyed. This, this, is, this is again done through the ministries and the lobbying part. Now recently the same minister helped PETA and the WRRC rogues who made the complaint about the Manakula Vinayagar temple elephant Lakshmi in Pondicherry. She is one of the best upkept elephants. The Aurobindo Ashram in Pondicherry had a problem because their footfall is lower compared to the Manakula Vinayagar temple footfall because of Lakshmi's attraction. When devotees see Lakshmi, the kids, they pull their parents towards Lakshmi. So that became a working point. Then Peter worked with the uh, French population, which is a French colony. So they used the French population, French embassy, put pressure on the chief minister. Menaka Gandhi has been putting pressure on Ms. Kiran Bedi to take this elephant out, which did not work from 2012 onwards. It's almost eight years, though they tried to take the elephant two times out and they found this elephant is perfectly okay because this elephant goes to the Mudumalai rejuvenation camp every year and it's been treated of all ailments. So even now, the elephant does not have any problem, but Meneka Gandhi used the AWBI right to the forest department based on a complaint from this crook of WRRC who stole Marakanam, the Kanchimat elephants and confiscated the elephant and kept it in a private place. This elephant is being living with, surrounded by devotees and the temple uh, active and enlightening and a lively atmosphere and suddenly she has been pulled out and dumped in a cart. Yes, you can see her literally sulking. Though the animal rights and the Menekas clan keep rejoicing and talking about it, saying that the elephant has been freed, etc., all kind of nonsense, but the elephant is going down day by day. Mind you, the elephants moved from one location to another will take at least month to three months to six months to trust the new place and started lying down and having a nap. Till such time, the elephant does not lie down. It will stand in the same place. And so the elephant keeps standing and sleeping. One. Next is the rogue sanctuaries. 
rogue sanctuaries when I say it's WRRC and Wild FSOS because according to Central Zoo Authority who gives license for these shelters has termed them as illegal and the Uttar Pradesh government has been told to shut down Wild FSOS and the forest department and the NETA is being bribed by Wild FSOS so that continues. He has used the uh, good influence of those that minister in the center to confiscate uh, temple and private elephants. And he has not paid single pie on them. And he's got these elephants in his uh, sanctuary. And he's uh, shaming India abroad as usual, saying that India is a barbaric, India is a cruel, they don't know how to keep their elephants. So we have rescued these elephants, please give us in dollars. He brings in 20 crores for the last five years. Every year is bringing in 20, 20 crores. He has parked huge amount of funds abroad because celebrities, Hollywood celebrities are propagating for him. So he's got a full-fledged marketing company abroad. Bringing money from Wild FSO US to Wild FSO India, it's a crime because that's not a donation, that's money transfer, that's Awala. So he needs to be investigated, but the government is silent, the forest department is silent because I think he gives huge money to them. Next is Wise for Asian Elephant Society, that's Sangeeta Crypto IA. She just collected 50,000 rupees saying that she is going to restore elephant corridors in Kerala. This is the kind of sabotage, this is the kind of nonsense going on. I hope you understood everything in detail. The ministers back up the NG, foreign NGOs, the rogues in the business. They are making money. Most of them have FCRA numbers and most of them have Nari Shakti Purashkar Award. This is for the Prime Minister's Office and the Ministry of Home and Ministry of Finance to so stop this nonsense. This is an attack directly on Hinduism, Hindu culture. Just like Sabrimala and Jalikattu. Thank you very much.